we have some wonderful news to share with all of you. Return of the Avatars, the cosmic architect tools of our future becoming ready for all of you to read. And it's been such a journey for Jane and me. So let me share with you a little bit about what you can expect from Return of the Avatars. And we also like to let you know that for those of you who haven't yet read the first book of our future human strategy, The Quest of Rose, that's okay. We've created a synopsis in Return of the Avatars that gives you a summary of the quest of rose but of course we do highly recommend that you begin with book one because this is book two of the future humans trilogy now so for those of you who have read the quest of rose book one you may remember how rose went through profound rebirth experience through which she discovered these cosmic keys of our future becoming and she discovered through these keys with the help of her grandmother fadandi the deeper hidden cosmic architecture of life and consciousness. And she started to then explore how this remarkable architecture is really part of nature itself. It's within us. And yet we haven't been co-creating with this architecture and instead have been creating systems and models and worldviews that are running contrary to that. So when we are entering into return of the avatars, we're really entering into Rose being very upset with the state of the world, very upset, especially with the economic models and systems and the politics of disunity and the agendas of domination. And so she's plunged into challenge after challenge, dangers luring around the corner and her confidence is growing as well. And with that, her powers, her future human powers, but she doesn't quite realize what that is attracting. There are some deeper lessons for Rose to discover about her own ego and about shadow dynamics and about the attraction of these powers and how important it is for her to discover and awaken the wisdom of the higher heart so that she can safely develop these future human powers. And some of those are remarkable powers, which some may even think are supernatural powers, but they're really intrinsic powers that are here available for all of us, so such as the, the powers of direct intuition, of clear understanding, of foresight and deep insight and hindsight. And these, these powers to really being able to shift reality in these critical moments. And through this journey with Return of the Avatars, Rose now also is bringing into this amazing transformation journey whole new characters, whole new friends, uh, as well as some wonderful male characters that you will be discovering. And she starts to now co-create with her nephew Olaf the next series of stages of the future humans game, how the Cosmic Compass game can really be played as the game for shifting how we play the game of life on planet Earth. Jane, maybe you can share a little bit more what it has meant for you. <laughs> Thank you, Annas. You summed it up beautifully. And there's another way of looking at this book and what I believe is its, its, its import. First, we would have to say on the sensory physical level. It does something that the poet expresses wonderfully well when he says, redeem the time, redeem the unread vision of the higher dream. <laughs> what we try to bring you, my friends, in this book is the higher dream, the higher possibility that always seems to occur in times of breakdown. The Renaissance was preceded by time of terrible breakdown and loss, and then suddenly this enormous unfolding of creativity, of what the Italians called in the Italian Renaissance, rinascita, renewal. This is a book about deep, intense, full system renewal. It's a new time. It's a new day. It's a new kind of human, and above all, 
It holds the potential of being a new world. Psychologically, we find that in this book, we, we try to offer both the story and you, the reader, very different ways of thinking who and what we really are. We are not encapsulated bags of skin dragging around dreary little egos. We are part of the universe herself. We are the universe in miniature. We have access to knowings, ways of knowing, ways of acting, ways of tapping into domains and dimensions of the self that we had really forgotten that we had. The new science, the new quantum physics, gives us a perspective on our humanity that is more than mythic. <laughs> it's the myth has become real. The hero and heroine of a thousand faces has come back from their wanderings, and we put them right there in the center of the book to tell us it's a new time. It's a new possibility. Be not afraid. We were made for these times. And then the, the narrative itself, the narrative that takes the story of a young woman who nearly dies of COVID, but then comes through and goes to the other side of the other side of our existence and comes back rich with understanding, well apparelled to take on the larger questions of the time. And her grandmother, who is devised as a kind of female Merlin, <laughs> and nothing stops her. And she has, she brims with laughter because she sees the deeper, outrageous, miraculous truth of things. And then, of course, ultimately, this is a spiritual story. It offers you guidance, not just to new ways of being, but to new perceptions mm -hmm of what is behind and beyond the veil of the old ways of seeing. It gives you the perspective of life as it yet can be and perhaps should be if we are going to redeem the time, redeem the unread vision of the higher dream. Please join us in this remarkable journey. We will meet you there. Thank you.